Hey guys, it's David Farrell, Music Theory 1, video number 3. Today we're talking about the circle of fifths, we're talking about relative keys and key signatures, a whole bunch of things that's going to make it a little bit easier for us to deal with our major and minor scales. We talked about major and minor scales in our last video. A couple of major scales here, the E-flat major scale and the A major scale written out here. We know they're major scales because they have that interval pattern we've talked about, whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. You can see them written out here with all their accidentals, E-flat with all its flats and A with all its sharps. But one thing that we might uh, see pretty commonly in music is that musicians don't want to take the time to write out all these accidentals. One of the big themes of music theory is that musicians are lazy and that they're trying to save time. And so oftentimes you won't see the scales written out this way. What you will see is something like what we see here on the bottom two staves. Instead of having the accidentals all written in the music, you can see we've got them grouped at the very front of our staff on the far left side. And so our E-flat major scale has that cluster of three flats, and they're the three flats that we saw in the scale, B-flat, E-flat, and A-flat. This is a key signature, this little grouping of accidentals, and it's a shorthand. It says that anytime we see any of these accidentals later on in the music, we're going to apply those accidentals. And so in the third staff from the top here, every B we're going to see is a B flat, every E we're going to see is an E flat, and every A we're going to see is an A flat. And so the scale we would hear would be the same E flat major. Likewise, the three sharp key signature on the bottom staff there is going to play our A major key signature. Instead of writing in all those notes, we've just got the, the accidentals there up front, the F sharp, the C sharp, and the G sharp, and that's going to save us the time of having to write in a sharp every time we see a C or every time we see an F. So key signatures are a really useful written shortcut. They make the music a little bit faster to write and a little bit neater to read. Key signatures are also a really useful mental shortcut because instead of having to figure out what all the whole steps and half steps are from every single note in the scale, we can just remember how many accidentals are in a major scale, and that can be a lot faster than trying to solve every major scale from the very beginning. And so instead of saying, well, E flat major, I gotta figure out whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half, we can just say, oh, E flat major, three flats, and then we've got our scale there. We can just say A major, three sharps, and we've got our scale there. Okay? That's a big leap, but today in this video we're going to learn how to do that so that we don't have to always go through all the intervals. So the question we need to know when we're figuring out these key signatures first is, when we talk about how many accidentals there are, which notes are getting those accidentals, right? If we know there's three sharps in a key signature, well, which three notes get the sharp? If we know there's five flats, which five notes get the flats? The useful thing is that we can figure this out because there's a specific order of accidentals for all our scales. Let's start with sharps. What we've got right here is the order of sharps. This is the order in which we add sharps to our major and minor key signatures. Whenever we have a key signature with sharps, they're going to be added in this order. F, C, G, D, A, E, and B. And so if there's a key that has two sharps in it, they're always going to be F and C. If there's a key that has four sharps in it, they're going to be F, C, G, and D. No matter what, they're always going to be in this order. This is an important bit of information. It's going to be really important for us to learning our key signatures, and learning those key signatures quickly is going to be really important to us to learning intervals, which is going to be important to us learning chords, and so we want to get this in our minds right away. How can we learn it? Well, there's a lot of different little mnemonic devices that exist. Here's one of the most common ones, Father Charles goes down and ends battle. That's one that you hear a lot, that's a really old one. If you Google F-C-G-D-A-E-B, if you just Google those letters in a row, you're going to find a website that's got a whole bunch more, and maybe they'll, you'll find one that's even easier for you to remember. The point is, we need to know this order of sharps because it's going to help us figure out all our sharp keys, okay? So whether you memorize this or something else doesn't really matter to me, but uh, we have to make sure we know. So this helps us out with our sharps. What about the flats when we have key signatures with flats? What is the order, what's the order that they go in? Well, it turns out that it's going to be not too complicated. Let's take a look at that order of flats. 
And here it is, the order of flats is B, E, A, D, G, C, F. If that looks a little bit familiar, that is because the order of flats is the exact same as the order of sharps, but backwards, but backwards. And so once again, if we have any major or minor key signature with flats in it, any of them, they're always going to go in this order. If there's a two flat key, those two flats are always going to be B and E. If there's a four flat key, they're always going to be B, E, A, D. If there's a seven flat key, they're always going to be B, E, A, D, G, C, and F. You're never going to see a major or minor key signature that has three flats but doesn't have B or E in them at the very beginning, okay? Just like the order of sharps, we can use a mnemonic to remember this. Let's take a look at a common one. Here it is, battle ends and down goes Charles' father. Yeah, this saying kind of works backwards and forwards, I guess. I don't know, it sort of does. Uh, regardless, you can Google it, and if you find other ones that work better for you, that's fine, and you can just remember it however you want. Once you know one, though, you know the other, because they are backwards versions of one another, and we do really, really, really need to remember these, because once we know them, we're going to have all the possible key signatures right at our fingertips. Okay, so that's going to be step one, learning the order of sharps and flats. But, of course, then we need to know, well, which groupings go with which keys, right? It's all well and good to know that four sharps is F sharp, C sharp, G sharp, and D sharp, but what major scale is that? Who knows, right? It's all well and good to know that five flats is B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, and G flat, but again, what major scale or what minor scale is that? To help us out, we've got a really useful tool. It's called the Circle of Fifths, and we are going to learn how to draw one right now. The Circle of Fifths starts with a circle. That's right. Circle of Fifths starts with a circle. Around this circle, we're going to draw all the major scales in a particular order that's going to help us figure out what their key signatures are. So after you've drawn step one of the circle, let's go to step two. Step two, we start at the top of the circle at 12 o'clock and we put in C. C major is our favorite major scale because it has no flats or no sharps. And so it's always a useful place to start right at the top. We're going to draw C. This is step two. Step one, draw a circle. Step two, C at the top. What's the next step? The next step is to fill in that order of sharps around the circle. F, C, G, D, A, E, and B. Okay? This is going to get us about halfway done with all the keys that we're going to need to worry about for major key signatures, and so it's a great start. If you haven't started drawing this, go ahead and pause the video, get out a sheet of paper, and start drawing along with me, because being able to draw the circle is really, really important. Once you've drawn along with me this far, unpause, and we'll move forward to the next step. What is that next step? Okay, that next step is going to be to fill in the flat side of the circle. And you can see what I've done here is that I started at the B natural I finished on, and I wrote in an enharmonic spelling there, right? An enharmonic pitch, a pitch that sounds the exact same, but we write a little bit differently. I changed my B to C flat. And then from there, I did that same order, right? C, G, D, A, E, and B, but all of them have flats on them. I can't tell you how important it is to remember to put these accidentals. I've seen lots of people not write in the flats in their circle of fifths, and it gets all their key signatures wrong, okay? So make sure you remember your flats here, and make sure you remember these enharmonic keys down at the bottom. We're going to change that B to a C flat. We've got the enharmonic spelling, and then we're going to write all our flats along the next half of the circle. This is giving us almost a complete circle. We're almost done with our major keys here. Just one more important step. And that last important step is to get the three enharmonic keys all in order on the bottom of our circle. We already did B and C flat. With our G flat, we've got our alternate spelling of F sharp. And with our D flat, we've got our alternate spelling of C sharp, okay? These, again, are enharmonic spellings. They're the same note on the keyboard. If you hit the note, it's going to sound the exact same. But we tend to see them written uh, in both forms. Sometimes you'll see music in C sharp major. Sometimes you'll see it in D flat major. Sometimes you'll see it in F sharp major. Sometimes you'll see it in G flat major. They sound the same, but they look different. And so what's the use of this now that we've drawn it? all out? Well, when we go around the circle clockwise to the right of C, we're going through all our sharp keys, and every time we move over one, we add a sharp. And so when we move from C to G, that key has one sharp, and the order of sharps tell us it's going to be F. 
when we go from G to D, that, key ha that major key has two sharps, F sharp and C sharp. When I go around four slots to E, then it has four sharps. And again, the order of sharps tells me they're F, C, G, and D. And it works the same way with flats. If I go to the left, so if I go one to the left to F major, I know there's one flat and it's going to be B flat. The order of flats tells me which flat it is. If I go three notches to the left, I'll get to E flat major. And I know that key has three flats. And the order tells me that they're B flat, E flat, and A flat. When we get to the bottom, we do have to pay attention to which way we went, we went to figure out what the key signatures are, right? D flat and G flat and C flat are flat keys. We get there by going left. And so D flat has five flats, G flat has six flats, and C flat has seven flats. The other keys, the enharmonic spellings of B, F sharp, and C sharp are sharp keys. And so B is going to have five sharps. F sharp is going to have six sharps, and C sharp is going to have seven sharps. We don't want to mess around with that. We don't want to think that D flat has seven sharps, or that G flat has six sharps, right? They have flats in the name, and so that's a pretty good clue that they're flat keys. But do make sure when you're on the bottom there, you spend a little bit of extra time making sure you know what which key you're looking at. So this is really useful for our major keys on the outside, but you can see I've added a little guy in the middle, and that's because we can also use our circle of fifths to help us deal with our minor keys, okay? Minor keys have the same key signatures as major keys. We don't have to learn any new order of flats and sharps. All the key signatures that we learn for major, they apply to minor too. These key signatures specifically are going to be used for the natural minor version of our scales. We remember that minor has a lot of different forms. It has that natural form, but it also has harmonic and melodic. And so music in the minor key often is going to have a lot of accidentals anyways, because we're going to need those to show those other versions of the scale. But the key signature is always going to go with the natural minor form of the scale. When we have a major key that shares a key signature with a minor key, we call those keys relative keys, all right? And the easiest one we know is going to be C major and A minor. Those are two relative keys because they both have the same key signature of no flats and no sharps. If we look at our circle, we see we moved that A three spots to the left from its major key place to put it into its minor key place, right? And this makes sense. If we remember from some of our earlier talks, we remember that we had to change three notes in our major scale to turn it into a minor scale. And so if we want to add our relative minor keys to our circle of fifths, and we do want to do that, we want to know what our minor key signatures are, then what we need to do is rotate all of our major key spots three spaces counterclockwise, and that's going to put them next to their relative major key, okay? Let's look at how we can do this for all our key signatures without any accidentals. Okay, that's a whole bunch of them that I just wrote in. We can look where E major was on our circle of fifths. We see it down there in the lower right-hand corner, and I rotated it three spots counterclockwise. I moved E major to A, then to D, and then I landed on G, and that's going to be where the relative key of G major is. E minor and G major are relative keys. They both have one sharp. We already talked about A minor, moving it three slots over so that it matches up with C. We can take D and rotate it three spots with F. D minor and F major are relative keys. They both have three flats. G rotates three spots to go with B flat major. C rotates three spots. C minor and E flat major are relative keys. And F rotates three spots. F minor and A flat major are relative keys. They both have four flats. Let's keep rotating our keys and fill in some more of the blank spots with our minor keys in the circle of fifths. The bottom three keys are going to have the same treatment that they had with our major keys here. When I rotate B flat three spots, I know B flat is a relative key to D flat major, but I want to have an enharmonic spelling of that available. Just like C sharp and D flat are enharmonic, B flat and A sharp are enharmonic keys. And so A sharp minor and C sharp major have the same key signature, so do B flat minor and D flat major. 
Same goes for E flat minor and G flat major and their enharmonic equivalents, D sharp minor and F sharp major. And the same goes for A flat minor and C flat major and their enharmonic equivalents, G sharp minor and B major. Let's rotate the last couple guys around this circle of fifths and then we'll finish off our minor keys here. Here we have finished off our circle by rotating the last three keys to some of our sharp minor keys. C sharp rotates three spots around to E major. I left off that D flat major because we don't see that as a minor key very often. D flat minor we don't see terribly often, but C sharp we do. F sharp rotated around. F sharp is the relative minor of A major and B minor the relative minor of D major. Okay, this is our complete circle of fifths with major and relative minor keys. This diagram shows us every major and minor key signature that we need to know. Once we can draw it, we have access to all of them, and it's going to be very, very, very useful for us to be able to do so. I've drawn a million circle of fifths. It's unbelievably helpful in music theory because knowing these key signatures is essential to moving forward with understanding music, okay? So practice drawing your circle of fifths. Watch through the, these portions of the video again if you need to, if you're unsure, but get yourself used to drawing it. When we have quizzes or exams, this should be the first thing that you draw because it's going to unlock all the information that you need to get yourself started with understanding major and minor keys. That's all for our video today. Video three, we talked about how to draw the circle of fifths and how to use it to figure out key signatures. The circle of fifths, again, I can't stress how important a tool it's going to be for us. It helps us understand our major keys. It also helps us understand those relative minor keys because they share a key signature. Please make sure you practice drawing the circle. Use this video as a reference. And thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time in class.